What's good everyone, it's Steve from Sneaker Tech Talk, back with another video today. For today's video, we will be taking a look at the Air Max 186 in the Big Bubble White and Royal Blue colorway. All right, so before we get things started, the same as last year's box, as far as the box goes for this pair, you do have this black and red box with this oversized Nike swoosh at the top with a plastic window that you can see through. The size tag label does read Nike Air Max 186 OG in white and royal blue. I got these in a women's size 12 and a half. These are a women's exclusive, which does equate to a size 11 men's. So without further ado, let's take a look at the shoes. All right, so starting at the bottom of the shoe of the Air Max 186 OGs, you do have a white, black, and blue outsole right here with that waffle outsole, that iconic outsole from Nike back in the 70s and 80s. It does return here on the 86 version of the Air Max 1s. Now moving your way up from that, you do have this polyurethane midsole. Now in my opinion, this midsole is a lot more firm from last year's white and red pair, but it's still definitely comfortable underfoot. Now the big thing about this shoe right here is the Air Max window. You have four chambers on this pair compared to the three on the standard 1987 pairs. So the big thing about this shoe is back in 1986 when they initially released it, they were having issues with this window popping and cracking and then the air system just failing at the heel of this shoe. And then in 1987, they did release another run of these with the smaller window with the three air chambers rather than the four. But Nike is bringing it back to 1986 with this big bubble and I couldn't be happier. So let me know what you guys think as far as the big bubble versus the smaller one. Which do you guys prefer as far as the window here on the Air Max one? And then in the forefoot of the Air Max one, you also have an encapsulated air sole unit in the forefoot. So it's definitely comfortable underfoot. For me, the 1987 standard pairs, I do find the midsole a lot more firm than the 1986 retros. I do like the compression on the 1986 slash big bubble Air Max ones. But sound off in the comments what you guys think. A lot of people prefer the smaller window. For me, I prefer the bigger one here on the Air Max 186. And then moving your way up from that, you have this blue kind of felt material wrapping all the way around the shoe. Same thing goes with the swoosh and at the back heel counter right here. And then you more or less just have a mesh material and a nylon material wrapping around the heel counter. A very simple material setup, nothing premium, but what can you expect from a shoe back in 1986? The whole purpose of this shoe right here is building it to be the exact specifications that they were in 1986. And I think they hit the nail on the head. I have held a 1986 pair over in Portland, Oregon, and I can tell you right now, these definitely resemble the pair that I saw last summer. So sound off in the comments on what you guys think of this retro and as far as the materials go. And then a couple quick details on this pair right here. On the outsole, it does say air right here. On the lateral and on the medial side, you do have a swoosh. On the back, you have a Nike Air logo. And then on the tongue, it does say Nike Air Max with that patch right here. And then on the inside of the shoe, you do have a blue insole with a white Nike Air. And then on this pair right here, another feature that they are bringing back is the stamp on the inside right here. It says size 12 and a half. That is a women's size 12 and a half, men's size 11. So as far as the details go, definitely getting things right compared to the OGs in 1986. Now really quickly, as far as the sizing goes on the Air Max ones, now pretty much in all of my Jordans, I am a size 10 and a half. I do find those to fit a bit more bulky. Now with these here, basically in all of my Air Maxes across the board, I am a size 11. I went with a US size 11 in these. My toe is right near the end of the shoe in these and they are very comfortable on foot. I think you can go true to size if you're a regular or a wide footer. These will break in pretty quickly because they do have very soft materials in the forefoot with the mesh and kind of felt or nubuck material. So overall, I think if you go true to size in the Air Max 186 OGs, you should be good to go. Now, if you guys didn't know, the designer for the Air Max 1 was Tinker Hatfield. And this is the first shoe to my knowledge that had the visible air on the side of the shoe. Nike as a whole wasn't a huge fan of bringing that tech and showing it on the side of the shoe. They didn't think people would care. 
Tinker Hatfield changed the game and wanted to show the consumers a visible window on the side of the shoe to show them a bit of the tech inside of the shoe. And he did that right here in the 1986 version of the Air Max One. And I think all of us can say that we are very grateful. And two years later, we did see it in the 1988 Air Jordan 3 on Michael Jordan's feet. So sound off in the comments what you guys think of this retro right here. Did you guys pick them up or are you looking to pick them up down the line? So that's gonna do it for today's video. As always, if you guys could like, comment, and subscribe, that would definitely help the channel a ton. And stick around for the end of the video as I will have an on-foot portion of the Air Max 1 86 OGs in the white and royal blue colorway. As always, if you guys could check out my Instagram over at Sneaker Tech Talk, as it is an extension of my YouTube channel with all my pickups, basketball footage, and nostalgia as a whole. As always, thanks for watching today's video, and until next time, peace. I'm in sync with the earth Ten toes deep, flower child from the turf I never switch sides, like even when I die I'm a ride for the squad, let up ties in the hearse I've been on